Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to start a brief series where we're going to show you how to develop this very simple C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application that you see here. Now, what does this application do? Well, it allows you to read in and decode, or what's called reverse engineer, binary files. Now, even if you're not necessarily interested in decoding binary files, I encourage you to follow the series because we're going to be covering a lot of different tools and techniques in C Sharp Windows Forms that you can use in many, many different types of applications. We've got here, we've got some data grid views, we're going to be talking about events, and we're going to be talking about converting data to different formats, so really important tools and techniques that you're going to want to use. Now, you may have seen applications out there that do something similar to what we're doing here. Uh, but what we're going to do is we are going to give it some added functionality that you don't normally see that will make it a whole lot easier to save the information that you decode and reverse engineer, save it as a simple text file so that you can use it later in your applications to determine the format of these files so you can quickly decode them. So why would you want to develop a binary file decoder? Well, an example is we have this application here that we're talking about in another series called ATP Draw. And what it allows you to do is draw out a circuit to simulate, in this case, a real world power system electric generator and the controls that control it and simulate that control system over time. And what this does when it's done with the simulation, it sends out a file that contains all of the time step values for this simulation results. And then what you can do is, if you know how to read that file, you can write a simple piece of software that does what you see here, which is plot the output data, all the different values on a plot. However, you do need to figure out what the format of the file is because it's a binary file. It's not a simple text file with comma separated values. It's a binary file. And I think the reason they did that was in order to save some space on the hard drive. But in this case, we're going to have to figure out if we want to write a little application, we're going to have to figure out what is the format of that binary file and how can we convert the binary data into usable values that we can then plot. So this application is going to allow us, for example, to load a binary file and we're going to load the output file that we got from this simulation. And this is the contents of the binary file. And on the left here, we've got what's called a data grid view. And if you've done any C sharp applications, you are probably familiar with data grid views. And it gives us for each byte in that binary file, it gives us an hexadecimal representation of that byte. So we've got the first byte, the second byte, and so on. Over here, we've got an ASCII version of those bytes. It tries to convert those bytes into ASCII characters. And you can see in some cases it's successful. Down here, in some cases, these are not represented by ASCII characters. They're, you know, doubles and floats and that kind of thing. So what it allows you to do is we've got all of the contents of the file in this left-hand data grid view in hexadecimal format. And we can scroll down and you can see both of the data grid views scroll. And what we can do is we can select some data here and see if it converts readily into usable values. So for example, I've selected four bytes and there are 16 bytes across here. I've selected four and see that it's, yeah, it comes out with a reasonable float value. So then I can reverse engineer it and say, hey, maybe this is a value uh, of one of the variables that we're outputting. And then maybe this one before it is a time value. And it looks like, yeah, it's a 5e to the minus fifth time value. So what you can do is you can go through and between the ASCII view, you can see we've got some, looks like names of some variables here. And we can start to decode and reverse engineer this and say, hey, these bytes here represent a name. Uh, these bytes here represent a time value. These bytes here represent an actual value of one of these variables. And doing that, you can go and reverse engineer the file and try to figure out the format. So then you can write some code using that format to do the plotting. 
basically that's what this allows you to do. It, it takes the hex values, converts to ASCII, and then down here converts to floats or integers. And also we have a feature that makes it a lot easier once you've figured out what these variables are, then you can save that data automatically to a CSV text file and use that data as input to another application that's going to do the plotting, for example. And it will say, okay, well, these values are values of one of these variables. This next one is a time value and so on. And then each variable, when you've identified what it is and what's the data type, you just select the data type here from this dropdown, ASCII float integer double. Uh, you can give it a notation, a little name to help you understand what it is. You hit save selection and it automatically appends the byte number, the range, uh, what type it is, what's your little notation. And you can save it in a text file like you see here. And this is basically all of the different uh, decodings I did that tell you which these little bits of data, which they are. And then you can take this in your application and you can read it in if you want to plot this data and this will help you parse the data and convert it to the right format. So now as we do with most of our projects, let's talk a little bit about the overall design concepts. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward application. Honestly, it took me like three days to write it, but it's best that we first look at some of the design concepts that we're going to be using. Now, as you see over here, we've got all the 8-bit bytes represented in the binary file. And on the right, we've got the ASCII version of those to the extent it can convert them. What we're going to do is we are going to read the entire file into an array of bytes. And each one of these elements is a byte, an 8-bit byte. And it's got two hexadecimal 4-bit binary numbers that are converted to the hex numbers you see here. Now, what's important you understand with binary files, they're not laid out like a normal text file, a CSV file. Uh, it's basically just a whole group of bytes. There's no end of line characters. Uh, it's just a bunch of bytes and it's up to you to figure out what the layout is, what the format, and which bytes represent which variable. So this is where the decoding and reverse engineering comes in. So we're going to have a byte array and in this particular file, you can see down here, we're keeping track. The number of total bytes is 280,204, and we've got 17,500 rows of 16 bytes. So we've got eight and eight. So there's going to be a byte array of 280,000 bytes. And one of the challenges with decoding and reverse engineering is trying to figure out which bytes represent a real value. So as you probably know, different variable types like floats and doubles and integers can be represented by various numbers of bytes. So for example, a float might be 32 bits, uh, a double might be 64 bits, integers can be um, unsigned or signed, different lengths of integers, same things with ASCII characters and strings. So one of the challenges with reverse engineering this is trying to figure out which of these values represent a real number. And the way we do that is we, for example, select this and then drag, and you can see down here on the bottom, it tries to convert those values into, in this case, floats and ints. And if we select four, you can see it has come up with a float value, which is 32 bits or eight bits. Each one is eight bits times four, that's 32 bits. And it has said this is a float of 48.3. So if that makes sense to us, then we can assume that that is a legitimate value and we can save it as a um, float. And then the next one is another, looks like another value that's a float. And then the next one is another value. And here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six variables. So it's a matter of taking elements of the byte array of varying lengths, right? It could be uh, 32 bits, it could be 16, whatever, depending on the file, taking those values and converting them as best we can to real numbers. So a lot of this is going to be conversion. Over here, we are converting all of the 8-bit elements 
into ASCII characters if they can be converted. And then down here we convert to whatever else we can come up with, floats, integers, strings, whatever. So the first thing, we're going to read the entire file into a byte array, and then we're going to do a lot of conversion from these hex values, which are string values. We're going to convert to ASCII, we're going to convert to all these different variable types, and we're going to use what's called a bit converter in C Sharp. And that will help us convert these byte values into the different variable types. And again, we have to figure out whether we're going to use 4 bytes or 8 bytes or whatever, which ones of those represent real numbers. In this case, you can see up here, all of these bytes across the top plus in the next row represent ASCII characters with a date and time. So as you can imagine, we're going to need uh, these data grid views to display on the left the hex values, on the right the ASCII values. So we're going to have two data grid views, and we're going to have to figure out how to take this byte array of all the variables and convert it into a data source for the data grid views. And a lot of this is going to be the selection process. So we're going to be able to select certain numbers of bytes and as we select more, it's going to update the conversion. So we're going to have to figure out selection events with this data grid view. As we select more, it's going to try to convert. We're also going to be careful that when you can't convert, so for example, in this case, it can't convert those five bytes into any recognizable value, so it fails we're going to have to have some sort of error detection if it's unable. And what we're going to use is nullable values. We're going to try and do a conversion in a method. And if it can, it's going to return a null. So we're going to have to use nullable values. So that's another thing we're going to discuss. And then we're also going to be able to, for example, scroll the left-hand data grid view, and the right one will automatically scroll with it. Um, we're going to load a file, load the binary file, and then as we have a selection and we want to save it, we're going to have the Save Selection button that saves whatever's selected. It saves the range values, uh, what type it is that we select. So we're going to have this combo box drop down, and also we're going to have this text box that we can enter a name or whatever. So that's the basic design of this. Again, it's pretty straightforward. It only took me like three days to get this all done. Um, we're also going to do some fancy formatting with these data grid views. You can see we don't have a header for the rows and columns. Um, I've also added a bitmap image, this line here, in order to break this data grid view into eight bytes each, just to give us a visual separation. I added this bitmap and placed it right here. You can probably do that with a data grid view, but it's more coding than it's worth. So that's the basic design concepts of this. Again, it's pretty straightforward, but we're going to be talking about a bunch of different tools and techniques in order to get this done. So that's about it for this one. I encourage you to look at the rest of the videos in the series as we release them. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, but most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.